Welcome to Secrets Out Idaho. Each week, we let you in on the secrets of Southern Idaho and speak to the people who make it such a unique hidden gem. I'm your host, Connie Stouffer. This week is a season one finale. I want to thank everyone who has taken time to listen to the stories and secret spots from the amazing people who call Idaho home. We are going to be back with season two after a short break. So please be sure to hit the subscribe button so that you're the first one to hear more. And I can tell you, we've already got some amazing people coming on for season two. Also, if you're a fan of the show, please take a moment to leave a five-star rating and a review. It helps us so much, and you can't know how much we appreciate it. Now, on to this week's episode. We'll hear what it was like to overcome challenges and become one of the most influential athletes in track and field history. When we talk to gold medal winning Olympian, civil engineer, county commissioner, author, and lover of all things outdoors, Dick Bosbury. Dick Bosbury, thank you so much for joining us on Secrets Out Idaho. I'm so excited to talk to you and learn about your track and field history, the Olympics, and what you're doing now in Sun Valley. So welcome to the show. Yeah, thank you, Connie. I'm excited to be here. Uh, I've been in Idaho for uh, over a generation now, and i uh, love to call this place my home. Uh, it's, it's just great being here in Idaho. Wonderful. So for those of our audience who maybe are unfamiliar with you, can you just start by telling me a little bit about yourself? Yeah, I uh, grew up in Oregon, uh, went to Oregon State University to study engineering. And while I was there, my athletic career uh, took off and uh, I made the Olympic team in 1968, uh, more than 50 years ago. Uh and won a gold medal in the high jump. And that's when I introduced the rest of the world to my technique to jump over the bar called the Fosbury flop. And so that's always uh, followed me throughout my career and uh, followed me to Idaho when I moved here in in 77 uh, to uh, just to look for uh, some work and uh, I moved to Ketchum uh, and fell in love with the place. Uh, I love being in the mountains. Uh, there's, It's a very healthy community, so there are a lot of athletes there that do uh, just a ton of things indoors and outdoors. And, and so the lifestyle and, the, and really the community uh, it just was so attractive to me. Uh, and that's where I've uh, built uh, my engineering company, uh, Galena Engineering, and raised a family, uh, raised two girls, had a son. Uh, they're, they've all uh, grown up and, and they have their own families now. Uh, but uh, uh, it, it's just been a, a great place for me. And, and so I really focused on my engineering career and and. Uh, working as city engineer for Ketchum and Sun Valley, and uh, my partner was a county engineer. And, and then last fall, I was elected as a county commissioner, so I'm still doing public service. Uh, I, I am very involved in the in the community. I'm, I'm on the board with the YMCA, uh, but I designed all the bike paths and recreational trails uh, through the county and and around Sun Valley, and uh, I'm I'm really uh, proud that that so many people have used that. And uh, Blaine County's just been a, a great spot for me. Wonderful. So I'm really interested to learn more about the origin of the Fosbury flop, and I think that comes a little bit from your engineering background. Can you tell me a little bit about how that? came about and how you innovated the sport of high jumping? Sure. Well, you know, a a lot of people who know that I'm an engineer, they believe that uh, I sat down and designed this, you know, whether it's on paper in my head, but actually it was all due to instinct and uh, a, a very strong uh, motivation to quit losing. Uh, so I was I, I was really driven uh, and highly motivated. And 
And what had happened is uh, starting uh, uh, sports in grade school, uh, played football, loved basketball. That's my favorite sport. And in track and field, our, our teacher taught us uh, had us do all events. Uh, so we ran and sprinted and uh, jumped, long jump, high jump, threw the softball and tried all these different sports. And, and in the high jump, uh, our, our teacher taught us the old style, which was the scissors. And that's the oldest style of high jumping from the original, from the very first Olympic Games over a hundred years ago. Uh, but it, the classic style in the 60s was called the Western Roller, the Straddle. And I stuck with the scissors because it's simple. And I was tall uh, even then in grade school. And I used that until I got into high school when my my track coach spotted me and uh, came over and gave me my lecture <laughs> that uh, I was uh, uh, he he was challenging me. Why was I using the scissors? I told him that, it, you know, that's what I learned. And I've always competed with that. Um, and he explained that it was not an efficient technique and I needed to change. So he started to coach me to try to learn the the straddle and I was starting all over. And and that's when I really struggled. I was losing every meet and and having a tough time until halfway through the season I asked him if I could go back to the scissor. He said, Well son, don't give up trying to learn, but uh it's your choice. So he opened up the door, I went through it and in the next meet, I began to change my body position in reaction to the bar being raised higher. And uh, I started leaning back um, to try to lift my hips up. And I, I made the bar and they raised it again and leaned back farther. And, and so that day, I really... Uh, I changed the technique in order to survive and, and found a way that worked. It took a couple of years for it to evolve while I was in high school uh, and fully developed into what the flop is today. So I wonder what motivated you to keep going? Because I think other people, if they you know, were told they were doing it wrong and they needed to change and lost and lost and lost and lost, they might just be like, high jumping's not for me, obviously, and move on to a different sport. What kept you motivated and focused to keep at it to not only get better, but innovate it and do something different? Well, it's a really good question because a, a, a lot of when you're young and you're learning things, uh, there, there are a lot of influences that you have. Uh, playing sports, uh, most of it is being part of a team. And so uh, socially, that was really an important uh, influence on me. I really love playing games and playing sports. And, and so I wanted to stay on the team was was my major influence and motivation. And so that's that's why I didn't really give up uh, just because I had to learn a different technique. In every sport, we learn different plays, uh, different movements that we're supposed to make. And so that's part of the process that that all kids understand. And and uh, what I've learned about the qualities of, of being an Olympian is that when you have passion about what you're doing, you you just don't give it up so mm -hmm. easily. Um, but, you, you know, you've got to find your own way. And kids are very creative. They make things up constantly, whether you're an athlete uh, playing a game against your opponent, trying to score, you'll be creative and make up new moves, or you're a musician or uh, an, an actor in theater. We're, we're always creative and looking for the, the way that we want to express ourselves. But I just, you know, I didn't give it up because I love playing the game. And so I didn't want to miss being off of the team. Mm -hmm. And so then you 
innovate it and you get better. And now all of a sudden you're at the Olympics. Tell me what the experience was being at <laughs> the Olympic Games in Mexico. It was in Mexico City, right? Yes. Yeah. Tell me about that experience and how, what that was like. That's something that few people get to experience. Well, the, the Olympic Games are just an amazing event. And I was one of the young athletes that never had that Olympic dream because it's so high above uh, where I thought that I could ever achieve that I I just never had that dream. For me, it was a gradual process. It was step by step, um, improving in my own school and then uh, improving in the conference uh, and then being able to compete nationally. And when I once I made the Olympic team, which, which was a uh, very competitive, very tough and difficult. And I tell all of this story in, in, uh, in my new book, uh, called The Wizard of Foz. And, uh, it, it's, it, it's really well written story, but it, it, it talks about the struggles that I went through and, and the challenges and, and how I overcame it. But once I was wearing the red, white, and blue of Team USA, you know, I was so proud to represent my country and, and, uh, each step led me and prepared me. Uh, to to walk into the Olympic Stadium, 80,000 people sitting there. Everybody's eyes are on each of the athletes. And, and I, I, I really lear learned to manage my emotions and control them uh, and, and not be too excited, but really be uh, motivated to do the best uh, that I could. And I'm very competitive person. <laughs> and so I was in my element and uh, competing at the highest level. Uh, I had prepared for that and and I was ready and, and I was blessed. I had the best competitive day of my life. I never missed a height until my uh, teammate Ed Carruthers and I were going for the gold trying to get over the bar at a height that neither one of us had ever even tried before. Wow. But, you know, it's that it's that uh, competitive drive and the excitement uh, where everybody's watching you to see, will you succeed or will you fail? Uh, it's the excitement of sport. And I, that's why I'm a, still a sports fan today. But uh, I succeeded. I, I made it over the bar, set an American record, uh, tried to get over the world record. But I, once I'd won the gold, I was uh, the, the pressure was off. And uh, so I never I never made it over the world record height. But uh, I was so excited to uh, go on the podium, receive the gold medal and and watch the American flag go up listening to our national anthem and and celebrate with the crowd uh just the the victory of sports at the highest level it it's a memory i'll never forget i can imagine i just well i actually can't imagine i've never been in that sort of arena but i imagine representing your country and winning the gold medal is something that sticks with you forever it's a huge it's a huge honor it's a huge event and you know, all of us succeed at, at some level. And, and I, I think that's, uh, that's why I love working with kids and coaching them and teaching them. We all fail. We all miss. But you, you learn that if you really love it, don't quit. Don't give up. Just keep trying and, and, uh, follow what the coaches help you to do. Follow what your friends help you and and your parents uh advise you and and it takes a lot to really uh learn how to succeed and and follow the path that you're chosen to do so amazing so now i want to switch gears a little bit post olympics you're looking for a job you've graduated and land in sun valley tell me about 
what, why you decided to make that move from Oregon to Sun Valley and what it was like, because that was a while ago and things have changed um, there now. Yeah, of course. And, and you know, I uh, after I graduated from Oregon State with a degree in civil engineering technology, I moved to Eugene for work. Um, I was still kind of interested in in competing, but I, I, sport all sport was amateur in those days, Olympic sports. And so I came from a middle class family and, and I had learned that what I what I wanted to do was really follow my career and, and work. And in engineering, you get to build communities and I am good at mathematics. So I became a licensed land surveyor and I, I uh, visited Sun Valley in 73. Uh, with a friend of mine, we drove over in, in his Volkswagen bus and he'd moved up to Ketchum and, and was a writer on the uh, Ketchum Tomorrow staff, which was a, a paper, weekly paper that uh, that that it no longer exists. It was absorbed by the Mountain Express. And and I fell in love with the area. We came up in in uh, the Christmas holidays and I hadn't learned to ski. My coaches would never let me try <laughs> anything so risky as that. So I still hadn't skied, but I fell in love with the area. And, and so after I lived in Eugene uh, for a few years, uh, I, I had become involved with a, uh, an architect student at University of Oregon who grew up in McCall. And uh, she wanted to... After she got her degree in architecture, she wanted to move to Ketchum. And so uh, she suggested it. We both moved up there and, and uh, found uh, it an amazingly great place to live. And uh, I had to get a job. And, and my first year, I worked as a structural engineer uh, to, with, uh, with another uh, man uh, and... And then I met my future partner, who was a, an engineer and surveyor, and I asked him for a job. And he didn't want to have any employees, but he took me on as a partner, and uh, and the rest was history. We started off with just uh, two people in our shop, and and over the next thirty years, we built uh, a company with two offices, twenty six employees. Uh, and and uh, it was a uh, just a great opportunity, and we did we did a lot of good work in in the valley, uh, and uh, you know I once I moved there, I found my home. I I mean there I joined a a, a group that was uh, going for fun runs uh, at at lunch break and. Uh, there's uh, hundreds of trails to go on to and climb up Baldy, whether whether you ski down or you jog down in the summertime. Just so many uh, great activities that are there in the community that uh, has kept me there. Now, I've traveled all over the world um, because I got involved with uh, Olympian alumni. I was elected president of the World Olympians. Association. Today, I'm president of the U.S. Olympians and Paralympians, and we have a chapter in Idaho. And so I travel all over the world, and I have never found the place <laughs> <laughs> that that is, um, is motivating uh, for me to move. I, I just love it in Idaho. I've got so many favorite places that I, I love to hang out and uh, it's just the best place. There is really something special about it. We've had a number of people who've come to visit and they've gone up to Sun Valley and they're just blown away. They, it sells them on, on Idaho immediately. There's just something really special about about that up there. So. Well, it's different because it's it's a mountain resort. And so on the one hand, it's, it's small, low population. 
you know, Ketchum's uh, less than 4,000 population. Sun Valley's a little more than 1,000. Haley now is our county seat at, at about 9,000 population. So it's small town, but it, it has an influence with all of the visitors and the tourists that come there. Uh, so that they're always an outside influence that is revitalizing to the community. But the environment is is what we all fall in love with, uh, with clean air, blue sky and and stars at night. Uh, and and with the you know, with the small towns, you can you don't have all the light uh, at nights uh, that you would have in the city. And, and so it's just a it's a very special place and it's unique. Uh, but we have uh, we're very fortunate to have a Sun Valley Symphony. We have a lot of music musicians that come up there, um, and uh, we're we're constantly organizing conferences, uh, whether it's for healthy living, or the environment, or for business. Uh, it, it's it's got a lot of highly educated people, high achieving. And uh, it's it's just a great community from my perspective. Yeah, the stars is one thing. The the dark sky reserve that was recently de uh, designated up there, which right. is amazing, and and the only place I think in the country to date that has the the dark sky reserve that really protects that view shed for stars that you can't get a better view anywhere in the country. Right. When you go out camping at night and and uh, go out exploring, and uh, it, it's it really. Uh, it changes the whole environment to the the way that we've regulated how everyone's houses are lighted in the outside of commercial buildings. Uh, we've we've got design standards that keep it safe so that you can see where you're going at night, but uh, it shades the sky uh, that you look up to heavens and. Uh, you can see all the galaxies and constellations, and it. it's it's really wonderful. So, did you ever learn to ski? Was that something you eventually got? Oh on? yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. You know, by the time that I moved uh, to to Ketchum, I was a beginner skier, and uh, and I'll never forget. You know, the first day I went up skiing in December, and and. I'm a novice and riding the chair up on the River Run side, uh, I goofed up. Uh, I lost my ski. <laughs> and so my my first uh, day was spent. We had fresh powder. It was a glorious day. And I spent the first half of the day going to find my ski <laughs> in the powder trying to get down there on on one ski and and uh it, it was uh, it, a journey I'll never forget but I learned to alpine ski uh I became a a nordic skier um and then I learned skate skiing as we had new technology and then I learned how to snowboard oh, and wow. uh I've done telemark uh, backcountry skiing and toured with our yurts that we have up there, which are are an, an amazing experience to have in the winter time. Um, and so I've done every kind of skiing, and uh, now as I get older, I I slow down a little bit, and so today uh, I enjoy uh, snowshoeing mm -hmm. and taking the dogs for a hike up in the up in the hills, and uh, it's great exercise. You get a little bit of vertical. You got a great view of the valley, and uh, so there's there's always so much to to try to learn. And uh, I, I, when I was a kid, I rode my bike a lot. So I had a road bike uh, that I acquired early on. And then uh, now I've got a mountain bike so I can go on the the dirt roads and the back tr country trails and uh, so much to explore and, and experience and look at the wildlife that we have up there. Uh, it's uh, you know it's just a great place to to recreate and enjoy the outdoors. I'm glad you mentioned the yurts. When I moved out west, I didn't know what a yurt was or that they were sure. out there in the wilderness for people to hike to or 
bike to or, you know, ski to. Um, they're just, it's an amazing amenity that we have out in the wilderness in Idaho for, for people to recreate so that you can be out in the backcountry for days or longer. It's it's a really cool thing that we do here in Idaho. It is. And, and actually, um, I had a, I bought a yurt and oh, really? put one in the backyard for uh, for a few years, just to get that outdoor experience, and and uh, it's it's really uh, it's fascinating. But we'll go up with friends and and uh, load up all our food and a little bit of of uh, bubbly to take along with us. Uh, haul that up in a sled and enjoy a long weekend, and uh, it, it's just a great way to get away. Yeah, I. It's it's really one of the special things about Idaho. Sure. I want to switch gears to, um, you mentioned earlier about designing the bike trails through yes. Blaine County. That is such a cool feature. And I didn't know that that's something that you had worked on. It's something as I've gone up and visited that I've taken advantage of and just think it's amazing that there's so many miles of trails leaking communities right. and, and all that. Tell me a little bit about what went into designing those trails. Well, to, there were, when I moved up there in 77, <clears throat> the, uh, we, we had just established a recreation district. There was a lot of drive and a lot of motivation by the community to have a separated system for bicyclists, uh, that was safe and you could use it for transportation to, to ride from one town to the next. And so we, at the time, the only real route that we had through the county was the stock drive where they used to move the sheep down out of the valley and, and get them to the railroad to, to be shipped out. Uh, but the Union Pacific, uh, uh, abandoned their railroad right away. And that really opened up the door for us to, uh, to look at a at a trail system, rails to trails that could connect all the communities. Uh, in Sun Valley, they had already studied how to do a, a separated trail system throughout uh, the the city of Sun Valley, and and I got to work on the construction of, of those uh, systems. But um, and and we'd done a few subdivisions and had. Uh, connecting trails uh, for pedestrian access through certain subdivisions. But once the railroad was abandoned, uh, the rec district worked hard to get funding uh, to build those paths. We had a, a lot of grants and we passed bond issues successfully, had a lot of support. But uh, today you can ride uh, the old railroad bed from south of Bellevue up uh, through Haley, uh, through the county, up into Ketchum, and all the way uh, north of Ketchum up to Hewland Meadows. And, and eventually, of course, we're looking at how we can connect with the Harriman Trail system, uh, which goes up to Galena Lodge and, and has great uh, off-road cycling there and, and through the city of Sun Valley. Uh, with their system, uh, it's it, it's really fun. We we've got new uh, projects in Haley with the annexation of Quigley Farms, uh, where where they're they're starting to do Nordic skiing in the winter time, and we're looking at connecting to BLM lands and public lands, uh, where we've got not non motorized access, but. Uh, to the, the BLM has really done a good job in master planning where we got all our trail bikes and our motorized access and snowmobiling that separate separated from the non-motorized uh, where people can hike and run and jog. And, and our paved path is for moms to uh, uh, carry a uh, uh, little tricycle for their babies and uh, get out and exercise. And uh, we've got a lot of equestrian trails. So it's pretty complex system of recreation for all kinds of users. Yeah, that's amazing that you've got something for everybody because sometimes, you know, people develop a trail and it's just for mm -hmm. bicyclists and walkers, but you don't mm -hmm. can't get, have horses or dirt bikes or other things on there, but you've really 
mapped it out and done something for everybody. It's a really, I think, a, a great amenity for the region there. Well, and we've learned too. We've learned where you can't mix things. And when, when uh, I mean, I had learned from Pre's Trail in Eugene, which is a world-class uh, system, and they had their pathways covered with wood chips, so it's really cushiony. Uh, we started out with that, and, and we had expected that possibly people could ride their horses along the shoulder of the bike paths. That really doesn't mix very well because it's horses. fine if people are walking, uh, but it, most of the, the trail riders go out the side canyons and, and they don't mind uh, hikers. And they, we've learned how to to deal when you're mountain biking and you come up uh, on a couple of uh, uh, people on horses who are trail riding, how to respect each other and, and not scare the horses. Um, but so we've kind of learned that you can't mix everything together. And so we've learned where um, horses uh, can go uh, and where the mountain bikers can go. And I mean, we have hundreds and hundreds of trails. It, it just never ends. So that that tends to minimize the conflicts. Yeah, I bet. So with your recreation love and your experience as a civil engineer, you kind of know a lot about every nook and cranny of you know the Wood River Valley and things that yeah. you're out there. So as somebody with all that experience, where are the best places, your favorite spots that if people haven't had a chance to experience um, that area or anywhere in Southern Idaho that you think are your top picks? Well, you know, good question because I grew up in Oregon and, and uh, growing up as a kid in Medford, we were uh, about, in those days, we were two hours from the beach. And I really miss being around a body of water. And, you know, that's that's one of the great things that uh, that you have with lakes and with reservoirs. And and so we t in uh, the Wood River Valley, we've got the lake in Sun Valley, but I love going to the mountain lakes. And so typically going over Galena Summit, uh, going up to visit uh, Pettit Lake and Alturas Lake, and then the you know the uh, the gem of Idaho is is uh, going to Redfish Lake uh, with the mountains in the back gr background. It's just uh, spectacular. But um, the one of the resources that we have in Idaho that's pretty unique with other states is the hot springs. And so we've got a seam, geological seam of hot springs that that come to the surface uh, in Warm Springs Drainage, Warm Springs Creek, and then uh, out Deer Creek. Uh, we've got hot springs at uh, Magic Reservoir, uh, but it but going up on the salmon to where the hot springs are and traveling around Idaho, we all have our own uh, getaway to where uh, there are private hot springs, uh, but it, there are some great uh, hot springs. I, I love coming down here to Hagerman uh, to, to relax and enjoy uh, soaking in, in hot water. It's so refreshing. And then there's, you know, I, I, I fished when I grew up in Oregon, but it, I was too busy working, and so I don't really fly fish. Uh, a lot of people love uh, the Bigwood uh, River, and and of course Silver Creek is is world famous to float that. Um, but I, you know, I've got my little hideaways too, uh, where, where nobody knows <laughs> uh, what gems we have in. In Idaho, and I've been fortunate to be able to hike uh, so many different trails. But one of my special places that that nobody knows about is uh, up at the headwaters of Trail Creek. There's uh, Trail Creek Falls mm -hmm. that uh, you gotta you gotta be able to do some bushwhacking mm -hmm. and be able to hike a little bit of steep terrain, but 
uh, there is a, a falls on Trail Creek that's probably 150 feet, 200 foot fall. Uh, it's snow melt. Oh, wow. So it's cold. <laughs> but I've jumped in in that uh, pool that's at the at the bottom of the falls and uh, it's uh, it, for for a hot summer day. It's a great place to escape to, um, but it you know there's uh, going over to Littlewood Reservoir and and a, a lot of the other uh, bodies of water that we have are so special uh, because Idaho's so dry. Uh, it's, you know it's it's hot and sunny on the south facing slopes more forested on the north facing slope so we get a lot of mix of, of special places but i love to climb peaks uh climb mountains get that uh, view that's spectacular and there's a lot of places uh that that you can explore on your own and you find your own hidden away place yeah i think that's what's so magical about Idaho being so big and so right. uh, sparsely populated is that you have an opportunity to go find a place that nobody else knows about. You know, exactly. you hike lots of trails and, and we have, you know, our podcast is called Secrets Out Idaho. So it's all about uh -huh. letting those secrets out, but people understandably are, are, are hesitant to, to tell everybody their favorite spots. So I appreciate you sharing, uh, sharing some of your favorite spots and locations because there's a lot of magical places here in Idaho. Yeah. And it, you know, I, I'm, uh, I'm healthy enough uh, to be able to hike to some amazing places. I, I don't mind sharing it. To me, it's a very, the, the Trail Creek Falls is kind of a sacred place. It's very mystical. Nobody gets there because it's rugged terrain <laughs> to be able to get there. Um, but it's, you know, there's... There are hundreds of places out there, uh, opportunities for everybody to discover your own private Idaho. That's so perfect. And I want to ask, too, as your perspective as a business owner who's grown your business and now right. you have lots of employees, was there any common denominator? I'm sure several of those employees moved from other places that that made them want to move up there other than just the job opportunity. Well, I think people come... Uh, they when they have a job opportunity, uh, they they'll come to an area and and as long as as you can make a living and find good housing, the uh, one of the assets that we really have in the in the Wood River Valley is the food is excellent. Uh, we've got great restaurants and and great chefs, uh, but the quality of food is is really good. So it's a healthy lifestyle. But what what you what I've found with uh, most of our employees have stayed there because they fall in love with the area just as I did, and and so. We move for for employment opportunities, but we stay because the environment and the culture is uh, is is just so awesome. People in the West generally are friendly and and very open. Um, and and I, like I said, you know, I've had the fortune to be able to travel all over the world and. I've seen other cultures that where people don't really want you to stay, <laughs> as a matter of fact. But, it, you know, people in Idaho are, are uh, much more welcoming and we have our own uh, traditions with our county fair in the in the summertime and uh, the different holidays for for Memorial Day and the 4th of July and and. Uh, Trailing of the sheep is one that's unique up there. Yeah, 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 exactly, and that's part of the culture that's historic and and really good to preserve, and it's fun. And you know, we've got uh, the uh, food has evolved. We've got new breweries that are starting uh, that that have started up that are very exciting. Um, we have a a, a slow 
uh, evolution in food industry. A lot more local farms are able to put their products out. People pay attention to what they eat. And, and I'm really excited with what the community's done and, and having the Magic Valley so close uh, that that's uh, people are really looking at creating healthy food uh, and and really cooking it so well. I mean, the Hispanic population and and we've had the Basque culture there for uh, for generations. Uh, and and so it's it's really fun to taste all of those different tastes with really good food. And and that's part of uh, part of a healthy lifestyle as well. Yeah, I think in communities the, the size of Haley or, or Ketchum or Sun Valley, you, don't, you wouldn't typically have that much diverse food um, and cultures that you have up there. And I think that's part You'd of it. You'd be surprised. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And so I think it, if people came up, they would be, be shocked. When I went up there the other day, I had Salvadorian right. food and, yep. and it was delicious. And you can have all sorts of amazing experiences in a, in a small town feel. And I think that's really special. No, it's well, it's a variety, uh, you know, is the spice of life. And so we've got the influence from South America and we've got the influence from Asia, influence from from Europe, because we've had uh, uh, ski uh, teachers from Austria and uh all over Europe, and I, it's it's really really fun to have all of those experiences and and share uh, the different cultures to uh, to add to the Western you know Rocky Mountain culture that's uh, that's still embedded and and is the rock and the foundation of of what we have in uh, in Blaine County. That's awesome. So this we're in, kind of getting towards the end of our episode, and so I want to give yeah. you an opportunity to share anything that I haven't asked either, you know, that about you or the people should know about the Wood River Valley if they're thinking about either just visiting or maybe making a move for them or their family. Well, t- you know, we're um, right now we're facing uh, the ch- the challenge of affordable housing. Not just for uh, for low income, but housing across the board, and and that's one of my biggest challenges as a county commissioner, and working with the cities to solve that. We're we're very fortunate. We're in a period of of uh, historic low unemployment, so there are plenty of jobs. Uh, some people are working two or three jobs to be able to to survive but um right now we've we've got to get some more housing in in the valley and throughout the state of Idaho uh to be able to invite more people to uh to come and and visit us I, we've got great recreation facilities the uh air travel has really expanded so there are so many more opportunities if you travel by air to our uh, highways and roads uh, are constantly being maintained and and upgraded. Uh, and and the um, I just love all of the shops that we have in uh, Haley and Ketchum, and and they're starting to expand into Bellevue with outdoor recreation. You can find all kinds of equipment and. Uh, ways to get out and have fun and be outdoors and and have a great time. We got uh, amazing golf courses and and tennis courts and swimming pools and and rock climbing walls and and all kinds of opportunities for kids and uh, education is is uh, constantly improving and and so it's. You know, it's it's been a great place to live. I love it, and I love it when my friends come to visit, and I get to host them, and and uh, so I, I I look forward to making new friends, meeting new people that will be uh, traveling here, and and come enjoy uh, just one more piece of of the great state of Idaho. 
That's true. I'm glad you mentioned about the education and, and opportunities for kids because the sure. education system up there is one of the best, if not the, the best in the state of Idaho. And I think growing kids growing up there, having access to world-class amenities and training for sports and the arts and theater and, and all of those things that, that you don't get in even larger communities. I think it's a really rich place for p- kids to grow up and have a real diverse cultural and educational opportunities. Well, as parents, we've all learned to, <laughs> you got to keep kids busy and active and, and engaged. So they, don't get bored and and find their way getting into trouble, which <laughs> we all experienced, myself included, <laughs> with my friends uh, growing up in Medford. And uh, but it, it, there, we've really got some great uh, wintertime and summer programs uh, for families and for kids, and and so. There's a there's a ton of stuff to do, and and uh, I, I'm. I'm really uh, proud that that our trail system has been a model and t- to influence other communities in Idaho. Boise's got a good green belt system, and and uh, t- a lot of the other uh, communities are really doing great work. So uh, it's it's a great place, and uh, it's safe and a good place to visit and. Hopefully, if you want to uh, come move here, you can do that as well. That's awesome. Dick, thank you so much for joining us on the show. I really appreciate you coming by and sharing your story and sharing all about what makes Idaho special. Yeah, you bet. No, I've enjoyed it. And everyone have a great summer this year. Thank you. Thanks for listening to Secrets Out Idaho. You can follow Southern Idaho Economic Development on social media or visit southernidaho.org to learn more. Please take a moment to leave a rating and review and subscribe so you can be the first to hear more Secrets Out Idaho. Until next time.